Welcome to section 11 of Neurology. In this section, I will be discussing aphasia. Let's get started. For step one, you need to be familiar with several types of aphasia. It's most important to understand Broca's aphasia, Wernicke's aphasia, and conduction aphasia. Let's discuss Broca aphasia first. Broca's area is located in the inferior frontal gyrus, which we'll look at in a moment. If this region of the brain is damaged, then patients will present with several key findings. First, their ability to comprehend verbal and written language is intact. Second, they have difficulty repeating phrases, so difficulty with repetition. And third, they are unable to speak fluidly. Fluidity refers to the ability to speak in a melodic and convincing manner. Hopefully after we go through some questions later in this lecture, you'll be more comfortable with fluidity. Because patients are able to comprehend verbal and written language, they recognize their difficulty with language and become frustrated. So these patients are often frustrated due to the awareness of their cognitive deficit. Some students use the letter B in Broca to remind them the boca, which just means mouth in Spanish, is broken. So B for broken boca. In other words, their mouth, in a sense, is broken, so they can't get words out. And this inability to speak is unique finding to broca aphasia. This is figure 8.2, which is a lateral view of the brain. This is posterior, and this is anterior. As we briefly discussed in section one of this chapter, Broca's area is right here. Again, this is in the inferior frontal gyrus. Okay, the next topic is Wernicke aphasia. Wernicke's area is located in the superior temporal gyrus, which we'll look at in a moment. If this region of the brain is damaged, then patients will present with several key findings. First, their ability to comprehend verbal or written language is impaired. Second, they have difficulty repeating phrases. And third, their speech is meaningless, but the patient can articulate in a melodic and convincing manner. Again, this idea refers to fluidity, and in this case, fluidity is intact. Because these patients are unable to comprehend verbal and written language, they don't recognize their difficulty with language, so they're not aware of their cognitive deficit. Some students use the letter W in Wernicke to remind them of the phrase word salad. In other words, patients with Wernicke aphasia are able to speak, but it's just gibberish nonsense. So in that sense, it's word salad. This is figure 8.2, which again is a lateral view of the brain. And as we discussed in section one of this chapter, Wernicke's area is right here. And recall that this is the superior temporal gyrus. Okay, before we move on to conduction aphasia, I'd like to mention that both Broca's area and Wernicke's area are supplied by the middle cerebral artery, or MCA. Recall from section nine that the vascular territory of the MCA is approximately here. It's important to know that a stroke of the terminal branches of the MCA could result in isolated damage to Broca's area or Wernicke's area, depending on the region of the vessel that's occluded. So again, the MCA supplies blood to both Broca's area and Wernicke's area. Okay, the last type of aphasia is called conduction aphasia. Conduction aphasia occurs due to damage to the arcuate fasciculus. The arcuate fasciculus is a fibrous band between Broca's area and Wernicke's area that relays important information about language. If this region of the brain is damaged, then patients will present with several key findings. First, their ability to comprehend verbal and written language is intact. Second, they have difficulty repeating phrases, so difficulty with repetition. And third, they are able to speak fluidly, so fluidity is intact. This is figure 8.2, which is a lateral view of the brain. 
And as we can see from this image, Broca's area is right here, and Wernicke's area is right here. Again, the arcuate fasciculus is a fibrous band between Broca's area and Wernicke's area, so we'd expect it to be right here. This is table 8.6, which provides the important information about each type of aphasia. I'm not going to read the table to you, but it is a good summary of what we've just covered. A 67-year-old female with a history of a stroke presents to a neurologist for follow-up care. As the history is taken, the neurologist notices the woman has difficulty with repetition despite normal comprehension and fluidity. What area of the brain is likely lesioned? Notice from the question stem that the patient can speak and understand normally, but the ability to repeat is impaired. So you can see because she has difficulty with repetition. This type of presentation is unique to conduction aphasia. Again, conduction aphasia is caused by damage to the arcuate fasciculus. So we're asked what area of the brain is likely lesioned. This would be the arcuate fasciculus. From table 8.6, we can see that conduction aphasia results in impaired repetition with intact comprehension and fluidity. Okay, let's do another question. A 72-year-old male is brought to the emergency department by his concerned children. Since admission, the man appears to have asked well-articulated questions, but they lack meaning. Upon further exam, he has difficulty repeating phrases and does not appear to understand the questions being asked. What region of the brain shown below is likely damaged? Okay, hopefully from the question stem, you notice that the patient is asking well-articulated questions, but they lack meaning. This refers to fluidity. Remember, this type of fluidity that lacks meaning is specific for Wernicke aphasia. In order to get this question right, you need to know that Wernicke's area is located right here. Again, this is the superior temporal gyrus. From table 8.6, we can see that Wernicke aphasia results in impaired comprehension and impaired repetition with intact fluidity. Okay, let's do one more question. An 88-year-old female is brought to the emergency department due to difficulty speaking. When asked to make a fist, she does so. When asked to repeat a simple phrase, she becomes highly agitated and shrugs her shoulders in frustration. What area of the brain shown below is likely damaged? Okay, so from the question stem, we know that the patient can comprehend language because she was able to follow instructions and make a fist. We also know that the patient can't speak very well or repeat phrases because she became highly agitated and shrugged her shoulders when asked to repeat a simple phrase. Hopefully this presentation made you think of Broca aphasia. In order to get this question right, you need to know that Broca's area is located right here. Again, this is the inferior frontal gyrus. From table 8.6, we can see that Broca aphasia results in impaired repetition, impaired fluidity, and intact comprehension. And that concludes this section.